Roger, Vector, Victor. Okay, good. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Keep going. I just got to be home by 6.30. Okay, we're done. Okay, sounds good. How long does it take you to get home from here? Eight minutes. Eight minutes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I need to know that. So, did Lindsay kick all your deer heads out of the house? Or yeah. what? Yes. All of them? Every last fucking one. Why? If you walked into my house, you wouldn't know. You're a deer hunter? Y y or that I do anything interesting. <laughs> 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 or that you live there? <laughs> pretty much. I like that, though. I mean, it's, it's pretty relaxing, honestly. Okay, so there's one that stands out in my mind right there, and that's that little tiny three-pointer on the bottom. I'm pretty sure I helped you drag that one out. I... <sighs> that was a bow kill. Vermont. That was that was uh, yep. That was a uh late season Vermont bow kill. Um came out of the Mekong down there by yes. stagecoach road. Yes. <laughs> the Mekong. I haven't heard that in forever. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that thing lived uh right by the road for a long time. Huh. Huh. Um those moose antlers up there. Yeah, it was us. That was us. <coughs> That elk. What the hell is that thing? That's Bruce. That's Bruce? He came from Connecticut. Okay. Hmm. We don't know anything about Bruce other than his name was Bruce. Hmm. Um, and everybody comes in here that's not a – you can test if somebody's a hunter when they come in here that we'd connect with because they're intrigued with Bruce. Bruce doesn't matter to <laughs> – Bruce doesn't matter to <laughs> us? Bruce doesn't matter to us. <laughs> it's a nice bull elk, I guess. Yeah. That's six what I've been, that's what I've been told. Yeah, if you're into that kind of thing. Huh. Um what do we got up there that's mounted? Talk to me about those. Um just, you know, deer that are uh, you know, I thought warrant mounting them, right? Like so, you know, one deer's the I I killed a deer on my own property. Done that once. You know, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, shot that out in Enfield when I lived out there and that was like an early season bow kill and so that was pretty cool had its summer coat on so that cleaned up real nice um, another one is my first you know rack deer that I shot in Nebraska Valley in Stowe you know that oh, was yeah. Yeah. that was at that point that was you know a good deer taken out of Stowe at that time mm -hmm. right I'd go down you know that was did you find Lanny Benoit's carving on a tree up in there yeah i think i did yeah i'm pretty sure you did yeah and, and so that was shot on like the you know up there um they call it michigan valley right up the yep. catamount trail towards the height of land up there and it was just walking it was first day deer season right first day of vermont deer season right like you know you're, you're hoping to see a four pointer five pointer and that showed up so <laughs> that was pretty sweet mm. um that was when they were still weighing deer in at the Moscow General Store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Long time ago. It seems like yesterday, but yeah. You know, and then you got, um, you know, kind of my, my uh, I got hooked on this one location that you went in and said there were, were no deer in there. Remember that? You wrote that, no deer? <laughs> I did write that in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> I took Joey up there. I had uh, shot. I think I shot one of the deer that's not mounted on Jamie's Miss Vermont night. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Mid-November. Yep. L later in the muzzleloader, I said, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm in Burlington at <laughs> Miss Vermont pageant. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. And then we went up there and hunted, and Joey wrote, no deer in the snow. It was after that, right? Then the loggers came in. And then the deer came in. Shortly after. Yeah. Yeah. They logged. They patch cut and patch cut and patch cut. And I just got fortunate. No one else was hunting that area for, like, basically, a, it felt like no one else was hunting that, right? And you know me well enough. I'm putting enough time in there that would know if it was actively getting hunted by anyone else. Mm -hmm. And then I just <coughs> started, you know, uh, shot five 
really nice deer out of that, you know, I don't know, like three mile by three mile chunk of woods. You, okay, back up a little bit. I do remember writing, writing in the snow. There was also a doe track right in the Y of the roads. So yeah. I jumped her, saw her, and I knew that you were probably going to co- come back down through there and see that track. And I'd wrote in the snow right there, doe. Yeah, with yeah, an yeah. arrow. Oh, yeah, So yeah. that you'd know, like, okay, <laughs> leave, leave that one alone. <laughs> so that area, uh, you went on a streak right there. You you killed how many over, they were, like, right around or over 200. Shot five. Well, I don't want to, I got to be careful what I say here, right? But they're deer stories, so I'll just say it. I think I shot, no, I'll be, they're right up there. Um, I think there was five of them that were all over 200, like, back-to-back years, wasn't there? Four. Four? Four. I did the I, I did the averages. I averaged, you know, over the course of eight years out of that piece of woods, like 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. Add them all up, divided by the number. Yeah. You know? That's pretty good. Yeah. It was a beautiful chunk of woods. And, you know, in that time, I never ran into a hunter. Wow. Right? In Vermont? No. Oh. This is all New Hampshire. Oh. Come on, let's. No. Let's <laughs> 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 all right. So I'm going to introduce this thing. Um those of you that are listening, uh, today's guest is a good buddy of mine, Matt Niddle. I'm joined with John Wright and Eric Adams. How are we doing, boys? Hello. Wonderful. Great. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? So, Matt, tell me a little bit about um, you before we dive right into killing, killing deer. Uh, grew up in Stowe, Vermont. You know, I mean, you know my, you know my background. I was a, um, you know... Uh, skier right little ski racer uh ski raced a lot when i was young that was my sport um and then hunting you know fishing and all the things you do growing up you know where you have access to you know fishing and hunting and you know out of your out of the back of your house yeah and to go a little further in depth you 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 were a phenomenal skier you raced uvm yep raced at uvm um, you know, won a national championship in GS in 2000, you know, so that was that, you know, I was a good ski racer, you know, good enough to do it until I was 26, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and that definitely like, uh, you know, um, like shaped, you know, my love for the outdoors, you know, I think, you know, that a lot of the coaches at that time, you know, in Stowe, a lot of the people live there for a reason, right? They like to ski. They like to be in the outdoors. They're they're seasonal workers a lot, right? There'll be, you know, a carpenter that, you know, is working all summer will take time. Maybe they're a ski coach. You know, I was surrounded by people that shared similar loves, right, uh, including hunting, right? We had a lot of excellent deer hunters that were like my ski coaches. Um, so, yeah, I mean, skiing was a huge part of my life, still is. Um, and then, you know, the outdoors, you know, especially deer hunting, right? Like, you know, turn 12 and you, you know, all of a sudden that's like the love of your life. Your old man didn't really deer hunt much though, right? He took me out hunting twice. So where did the passion for hunting come from? Um, there's a, he actually like, uh, you know the Dalmasses. Mm-hmm. Can you uh, the Dalmasses? They live back. Uh, his his father, you know, introduced us a little more hands on than my father. But my but my grandfather was a sportsman. You know, my dad. I grew up, you know, shooting, and you know, it it was never like you know he was not hunting. Right? I didn't grow up. He never was going hunting, right? But he was, you know, what I'd call like, um, you know, he came from a family of some hunters. You know, he just found other things in his life that he loved. Um. You know, he took me out. He, he introduced me, right, gun safety at a young age, um, you know, shooting at a super young age. And then, you know, I went grouse hunting with him once, first day I ever hunted. And I came back and, you know, I said, I want to go out in the afternoon. He's like, okay, go hunting. So I went out in the afternoon and hunted. And then I just went hunting. That's awesome. You know, and then same with deer. First day I ever went deer hunting. He's, and my father, which I'm trying to do with my boy, he didn't, like, have any um, – like, he wasn't, he truly was just, you want to go hunting? Okay, Matt, where do you want to deer hunt? I'm like, I think, oh, and looking back, it's the worst place I could have ever gone hunting, <laughs> right? But he, he's like, okay, 
I mean, he didn't, he didn't, he hadn't walked in the woods ever, right? He's like, so where do you want to go? And he'd get his gun out. And it's like from, yeah, I mean, I don't think he probably even put a bullet in it, huh. you know? And he's like, okay, where do you want me to sit? I was like, you're going to sit here. I was 12, right? He's like, where are you going to sit? I'm like, I'm going to go down there and sit, you know? And I was like, okay. And he's like, when you're, when you're ready to leave, just come, come get me on my rock and, you know, we'll head home. So I waited as long as you know 12 year old can wait <laughs> probably not very long. probably <laughs> not right yeah. like who knows it felt like all day yeah yeah <laughs> um went and got my dad went home and uh i said i want to go back out he's like okay my mom dressed my brother in a lot of orange and my brother wasn't a hunter and we went out hunted the afternoon and then then i just kept hunting right same as the introduction to the you know and we lived in a place where you could hunt. I mean, now it's not the same, right? In Stowe, it's different. There, a lot of a lot of homes are built up, but you know, fortunate being able to hunt out the back door. You got to see some bucks at the bottom of the hill hanging on the barn yep. every now and again. Yep, yep. You know, Eric's here, and <laughs> you know, they were legendary hunters. You know, his family and his dad had a like. You know, just that was you know, that was definitely memorable. You know, going into Lester's, you know, gun room hear that the boys shot something in Maine, you'd go down and look. And oh, yeah, my mom be right there. Like, she'd be driving me down right there, drop me off, let me see it hanging. Yeah. You know, I remember one deer when it, the, the, it was being scun, and uh, the hide was over its antlers, right? And the, an the hide came off the antlers like, holy shit. <laughs> that's not, that's, we don't have those around here, right? <laughs> you know, like, that is not the, that is not what I'm, I didn't know that, you know, it's a different species, right? Like, and so I saw that, I was like, okay. You know, but because of my skiing, right, I never had, uh, you know, no woe is me, right? I, you know, but I, I didn't have these, you know, opportunities. I chose to, you know, ski race, you know, and you're focused on your athletics in the fall. But I'd always make a lot of time to hunt. But I, you know, to this day, I think you know how I hunt. You know, I'm not, you know, I hunt a ton. Um, but I have yet to, you know, head to Maine for an extended period of time. You your, know. your hunting and ski racing goes hand in hand, right? Like when you were sk skiing at a competitive level, level and you're hunting, like you do things, I don't want to say at a high rate of speed, but you put oh, yeah. every bit of effort into it when you do it and whatever it is that you do. Yeah, it, until I got, until I hit 42 and I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like oh wow <man. laughs> <laughs> damn and i'm not uh, just just being honest right like yeah yeah definitely scaled back a little bit but scaled back other things so i can hunt more right <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> yeah um but yeah i think i think i think so yeah absolutely yeah right. no and that's what you know there's i i've said it before there's something in every athlete that can you know translate to hunting right uh, and, and i think every hunter right can get that adrenaline rush like, there's not many people that have like um yeah you're gonna have your chances in high school sports maybe it's even like you know junior athletics and get that adrenaline rush but you get that in deer hunting like for the rest of your life right like you know and I, I think there's really competitive people that are really great at deer hunting that there's very non-competitive, but that you get that, you know, that's my opinion on mm -hmm. it is that there's this, you know, such a reward when you're successful, you know, based on the t work you put in, which is just like, like sports or, or work, right. It's just like, it's just different to have that when in, in, you know, like a little more, you know, um, like primitive. Yeah. Right. Like you get that in a primitive sense. Right. Like in, in outdoors, you know, like you've you've accomplished something, mm -hmm. you know, and hopefully you've worked hard to accomplish that. So, you know, when that when it comes when it comes when it works out right, that you're, you know, really happy about it. Extremely rewarded. Yeah. People be like, how can you shoot a deer? I'm like walk around Vermont for two weeks, you know, for five years and we yeah. get the chance to shoot a deer. Like. <laughs> 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 yep. So tell me a little bit about what you what you do, what you've got going on here. We're we're sitting in your your shop. Tell me a little bit about what you got going on. Well, I you know, um we're I own a woodworking business. Um and uh we're sitting in our shop right now. We have, you know, roughly 
about 8,000 square feet of, of like fabrication, right? And then we've got um, an office that we do designs and engineering. You know, we really like to build, you know, build as cool a stuff as we can out of wood, right? But we're, we're a mill shop, right, that is focused on uh, luxury residential cabinetry and woodwork, you know? How many guys you got going? It, it varies, right? Um, you know, we have, I think right now we have 15 full-time employees, you know, um, and we'll bring in, you know, subs for, you know, based on the scope of work, right? We're not in, I mean, we're in a, yeah, so. Yeah, cool. we have a pretty, we, we, we have a great, you know, great, we do, I do what I love, you know, um, you know, so it's, it's been, you know, it's really reward. It's a really rewarding business. How'd you get into it? You know, kind of same as hunting. Like my, my was introduced to woodworking by my father, you know, and I had great, great, I was surrounded by great, great mentors, right? Just like hunting, right? Like whether it was, you know, visiting the Adams deer hanging there or running into, you know, ra rabbit in the woods, like out in, you know, the ranch leaning up against the same tree, <laughs> right? Still there. Where'd you shoot your deer rabbit? I do, you know, it's like, you just don't go on that, that area of the hillside. That's, that's rabbits, <laughs> right? Um, so from, you know, just on the woodworking side, the same, right? I mean, you guys all know, you know, the people that I've worked for and stuff. Stowe and um you know i just developed a love for you know equipment too right i like the i like the the woodworking i like the equipment and i like like if i built a piece of furniture when i was young i'd build two pieces because you always build the second piece quicker and better you know and that's basically what we do here right we're trying to you know build really high quality stuff you know um in a really practical way which means you're using some automation, you're using, you know, efficiencies in, in fabrication. Um, and so, you know, in our shop, right, we have CNC capabilities, we're communicating with, with technology from computers, and, uh, but still doing it in a custom sense, right? We're not fabricating a widget over and over. It's every, everything we build is, is unique, you know, but the woodworking started really similar to the ski racing. You know, you just need really be surrounded by really good people in your life. You know, and I've been really fortunate for that. Amen to that. So I think <clears throat> your woodworking skills began, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, when you started building bow bow stands, right? <laughs> you could drive up West Hill and you could count like a half a dozen bow stands on either side of the road over the bank. Oh, yeah. You can <laughs> see them still. Yeah, by the way, there's still one out in our field. There's a couple. <laughs> 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 it's good to see, though. My father was impressed. That at a young age, you... Asking permission and doing it. He was impressed I'm, by that. And thought it was great. <laughs> that field, I mean, that year, right? Like, I'd go into that field and I'd watch where they'd run, right? Go in there and watch where they'd run out of the field. I'm like, that's where I'm setting up, <laughs> right? And then coming close to the season, I'd go back in there and, you know, those fields are huge for our standards, yeah. right? And it was just, yeah, I never shot a deer out of that stand, but I showed my mother the stand once, right? She's like, oh, she did. She's like, holy shit, that is high, right? Like, you're going up there. I was like, oh, yeah, you know? And so, yeah, we had, I had stands littered all all way up that road. Hey, they're still there. You still see them. I s <laughs> Brendan cut a bunch of them down, right, yeah. when he devastated <laughs> Zizing's field, right? It's like, yeah, oh, yes. you know, I took a couple pictures of those. It's like, oh, that was a sad day seeing that area be developed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was good deer ground. And I didn't even get the woodwork out of the plants. Plants came over our desk, and we didn't even get them. I was like, isn't that a kick in the uh, ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so there's a buck right here um, that's not mounted, heavy horned. I think he's got at least five on one side, four on the other. He's, like, mounted on a piece of cherry, it looks like. Oh, that one, yeah. What's that one? That's that Vermont deer that I shot the leg off of. Yeah, tell me that story. Uh, that's a good one. I mean, that's a young, young aged tracking story, right? Like I think I could drive at that time, you know, and, um, I got in the woods, um, and, uh, beautiful day and, uh, cut a track, was with another deer, you know, and at that time I was, you know, I was, a, I was, I'd looped a lot, you know, I was looping on that track. And this is like, at the time felt like really big woods, right? It's substantial. I mean, it's not, you know, you know, that woods as well as anybody 
Adam's camp, right? Like, I mean, this is like, <laughs> this is like, yeah, sitting right there, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I was looping on that track, and again, like, this was during the time where, like, you know, a lot of the 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 the, the younger aggressive hunters were in Maine, I think, right? So, like, the woods were quiet then, right? Like, I mean, I, you're probably in Maine then, right? Yeah. yeah. Most most all of those good hunters were. Maine, New Hampshire, somewhere. They weren't there. They weren't they, they in, weren't, in they there, weren't there, right? Which, no. which they'd like, always come late season. It's yes. Like, yeah. I'd see, I'd see the guys that I heard about, right? Like in muzzleloader season, and and uh, heard, would hear great stories, right? You might run into a Moriarty or mm -hmm. an Adams, or and so um, what? You know, what era are we talking about? <laughs> oh, we're we're talking like oh, that's the air compressor just has an automatic drying <laughs> feature, um, like early two thousands or late nineties. <laughs> That's late nineties. Yeah. Things like ninety. That's like ninety seven. Yeah. Right. So the I think the hunting was good in Maine then. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. That's yeah, when yeah. you were like they were shooting like, right. Yeah. 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 And so I mean I was, uh, yeah. So I was in the area in Stowe that I'd hunt or the areas right. There was just no pressure. Yeah. Right. Like it's not like that anymore. Right. Like you cut a track and I had that track. I was so anyhow I'm looping on that right, and um, sure enough come you know I start looping I look up the hill and there's bedded. I saw a doe, right? She was like standing, looking around, and then right next to her, there's this bedded deer, and it was that buck, and the you know glistening off its antlers, and just like, you know, I was like, oh shit, that's you know biggest deer I'd ever um, had that amount of time to look at, right? And um, I just you know I settled down, I got down on a knee, and thought I was gonna kill that deer, and guess what? <laughs> nope. I mean, I hit it, right? And then the, then the chase started, you know, and, um, you know, I, I was unsuccessful finding that deer that day. Um, and to make a, you know, at that time, a terrible, you know, period in my, I don't want to say terrible, right? But you know what it's like. Hit a deer, you don't find it. At a young age, you're, you're tracking all over the woods. And um, it died, you know, went down to water, died. Somebody found it, right? And then they, I got the horns at a later date. Yeah. So that was nice. Do you, you think know. that was part of like what got you addicted to hunting bigger woods and going after big box and like because you were what you were in high school and you shot? Yeah, I mean, I had some good good close encounters with really big deer in, in high school. You know, um, I'll I'm never forget you were hunting a piece of woods and you were like the buck on the front of the Benoit buck. Oh yeah, I saw that buck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was an incredible afternoon, or no, that was a full day experience, right? Just, just a giant, right? Like you're like, you know, that thing was like, I swear to God, that thing was like with like six does, you know, walking over drainage in, you know, like in the Mount Mansfield area, and you know, I'm like, that is the biggest animal I've ever seen in the woods, deer, right? Picks its head up, I was like, holy shit, that's a buck. And it's not what you're expecting to see, and that thing had to been with like six does. And I shot at it immediately, right? Probably had no idea it was there at the time. And, you know, it's like, do you, you know, looking back, it's like, yeah, you rushed, could have been a mistake, but then you waited, it was a mistake, right? You just got to shoot, <laughs> right? <coughs> and, um, and so I'm shooting at that thing, and that thing starts running. But I will say that that buck picked its head up and just ran away from them, though. No kidding. Just left them. Gone. Gone. I followed it for, you know, at that age forever, right? Till it was dark. You know, and it headed up over, it was heading down into the underhill. And that was the year they shot those two huge deer on the underhill side late season, right? Like in the, like towards like the, mm -hmm. the um, Bolton area, right? I yeah, think I think it they was were one both of, like mid-150s yeah, bucks too. I think it was one of those deer, Yeah, right? I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Looked just like that buck on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that, was good, that was a good one, uh -huh. right? Um, yeah, yeah, and I mean... You want to tell the story about um, about your biggest one? Well, the biggest one's the one you were on the track with me, helping me try to get that. After I also hit that one, but oh, I was oh, just oh yeah. <laughs> let's let's go let's go back. Oh, you want to talk about that one? No, I'll do that one. I okay. mean, um, you know, no. I so like, and you were saying, how'd you get into big woods? I think a lot of my <laughs> big woods are from just you know being in the outdoors, you know, adventuring, right? Like I love to hike. You know, we all love to shed hunt. Right. There's nothing better than a day of like just exploring. Right. Like, you know. Yeah. And adventure. you go out and explore and you adventure. I like to bike a lot. Right. Gravel ride and cycle. And, um, you know, that's what gets you hooked on for me. Right. Like, you know, 
mm-hmm. like to hunt, to explore. And then to do that with a gun in your hands on a day where you're, you know, pr- you know, it's legal to shoot a deer makes it even that much more exciting. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so that's kind of how I fell in love with the, the bigger woods, you know, and, you know, it's nice to spend a full day in the woods, you know? Yeah. And that's the reward. Every time I hunt, that's my goal, right? How can I spend a full day in the woods? You know, it's what it takes a lot of times. Spend the whole day in the woods. Yeah. yeah. There's just something satisfying from doing it, too. Yeah. Oh, there's something about like, you know, getting out of the car when it's dark and getting in your car and it's dark and you didn't do anything all day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, true. Like, in terms of like, <laughs> if someone's like, what'd you do today? Be like, I hunted. Yeah. Be like, all day? Yeah. It was great. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go? It went great. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, I was actually on that, mm-hmm. like where that, you know, that area we were talking about, right? I was on a on a on a bike ride. I would like like to like look on old maps, right? Connect roads. You know, class six roads or whatever they are. And uh, you know, I was on this one road and I just noticed this logging operation. And I was like, okay, this is this is a perfect area. Right. And then I started, you know, scouting it. And, you know, uh, I don't run as many cameras now as I did, right? And the camera's really, like, basically just didn't do much in that location. Just told you what was yeah, around and, there. And I mean, it's, the story goes, right? Like, I, I found all this buck sign, like, just a tremendous amount, right? Like, 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 just, you know, I don't care who's listening to this. Like, you know it when you see it. And then add a little bit more, right? <laughs> or, yeah, you know, we know what it looks like. And then so... Um, Basically, in that, I, I found that and um, was like, okay, we got a really, there's a really mature deer in here, if not a couple, right? And then um, I just kind of, it was, it, I found that early season, right? I'll start looking for, for buck sign. John doesn't agree with this, <laughs> but, you know, start coming up with, you know, different plans of attack for the season based on, you know, buck sign. And um, so it just, like I said, it was clear there's a few mature bucks. I kind of kept track of it throughout the throughout the fall, and it led me into you know early muzzleloader season, um, just a concentration of really active sign. Right, starts out with like tickled trees, more tickled trees, then you start getting into you know ground scrapes and like okay, so this is going down, and maybe in a more like I think it could have been like a mile from where that was, but it's clear like this is the similar activity of those anim- of those deer, right? And so I took that spot really seriously. Uh, it was really warm and you know i'm a big low light hunter right like you know now with work and stuff like i'm watching the weather watching the wind and watching you know what i call low light right i'm looking for days where like you know that that sun's never really out right And it was just one of those days and it was low light and um i was uh, i had worked in the morning i was like i got to get into this area i was boogieing in and i'm heading in and I, i i had a little stool tied to my my uh fanny pack hiking in and i'd hiked in a ways and i'm i'm hit i'm in like the last like probably like quarter mile into where you know i was going to hang out for the evening um and there there's deer coming down the hill right it's like that's that's a shooter i made a good shot on it it disappeared i didn't know if i hit it or not went up on it and it's dead you know and that was a 204 pound eight right that short fat Mm -hmm. fat deer right and um I was like, I did it, right? Like, all paid off, right? Then I get a little antsy after a couple days, and I'm like, I'm going to go bull hunt. I'm going to go back into that area. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bring a lightweight climber. Port. I don't know what it was, but I hit up in, and I'm like, I got to check my camera. Check the camera. It's like, wow, I did not shoot the big deer, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then that's when that journey kind of started, right? I was like, I got to shoot that deer. And then, um, you know. You, but back up a little bit you you had photos of that deer how many years before you three years prior three years prior but i didn't get a picture of it until i killed the deer that i thought was it because i had never had a camera in that area right because i'm like why put a camera in like i'm into the activity i know they're here like what i'm gonna like fuck it up by putting a camera in and then wanting to go check it right right like this is before i mean it doesn't have cell service there anyhow but every year that you hunted it that you didn't kill him you killed a 200 pound buck in there yes which obviously for anybody everybody <laughs> listening you're gonna shoot the 200 pound buck yes but every single one of them was really good rack buck spoiler alert leading up to 
Oh, I mean, the like, year you got him. Well, the year before, right? The, the another year I'm up there. It's the first, I think it might have been the first day of uh, muzzleloader season, right? And I was just into this spot. I mean, I had a cup of coffee with me, right? Like a cooler, right? Like, like I don't, that's not me, right? I don't think it's, but it's like, thermos. It was like, that was that hot. I was like, I'm going to go lean up against this tree. And I had like a little cup of coffee, a little thermos, one of the little ones, because it's freezing out. And I could hear activity going crazy, right? Then it went quiet. I'm looking up this, like, like what I'd call shooting lane, right? But, like, I was leaning up right on logging road. And uh, sure enough, Buck looking right at me. It's like, he's trying to sneak out of there. He did a sign. And I don't know sneak out, but he wasn't as aggressive as he was. And um, I got my gun up, and I was like, that's a really big deer. I, but I knew it wasn't that deer, right? But I was like, I yeah, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> yeah. And that was, two, two, that was a 207-pound deer. He likes to shoot, by the way. So, uh, you know, that was that. Then the next year, right, there was, um, you know, I was like, there's that was two years, right? And it's not like I had a couple cameras. It's not like I was getting pictures of this deer. Like, I'd get, like, a picture. I, and, like, the, you know, we all go back to check our cameras, and guess what? They're getting all that activity, what, November, like, 13th to, like, December 1st mm-hmm. he'd show up that time period and then that next year I was like you know what I, I wasn't hunting that deer at that time I had thought he was dead and no one had you know like it was a really big deer um and then you know I was just it was again it was early muzzleloader season and I had my plan of a that day I was hunting the wind it was windiest day that I can remember really hunting and questioning why I was really hunting because it was so windy and, um, you know, I was just working my way around a really ledgy bank and I saw a deer coming towards me and I was like, that's a shooter. It was clear as day that it had like good mass. And it was, a, I, I don't even know at that point, like mass, it just had a real set of antlers on it. And so I got down and I, I he was coming right at me and, um, he then rolled his eyes up. Right. And it's like, and I saw at that point, the stickers on his horns. I was like, holy shit, I'm, that's the deer. Right. I was like, how did that, as I'm pulling the trigger, I'm like, I hadn't had a camera going. I thought he was dead a year ago. Right. And then, yeah, I shot that deer that, that day. And what did he go? What did he weigh? Two, that was 218. Yeah. And he, no, 220. That was 220. Sorry. 220. Big set of antlers. I mean, he, he was what, like 160. I mean, John will say he's like 130 inch deer, like yeah. the deer he <laughs> shot this year. Yeah. But, you know, um, <laughs> Yeah. And and I don't want to like I mean I know that you know there are people that are like like you know I didn't really get into scoring de- I didn't know you could score a de- like that was nothing I ever grew up hearing visiting Eric or any of the hunters in Vermont right like you'd you score were after the antlers. weight after yeah I was weight. yeah I was after like the way I grew up being you know like did it like mm-hmm. you the know hunt. and that's changed <clears throat> a little bit I mean I definitely am addicted to you know large antlers mm-hmm. uh, but you know. So yeah, then that deer that was two twenty actually, and I I think, you know I. I think he like, I measured him, and I'm not a measurer by any means, but I think he's in the fifties. Yeah, I know? would agree with that. And I thought he was in the sixties, quite honestly. Would be nice if he was, but <laughs> um, you know, he was at one point in his life. I mean, he's smaller than when I had pictures of him, right? He used to have a when you were getting photos of him the years prior, he had like a turkey foot on one side, didn't he? Yeah, and he had split brows, and then one year he'd broken off some some antlers, some the G twos were gone, and yeah. <laughs> you know, it was an attractive deer. He had that, you know, you were the first one, and, and you, you look at things uh, clearly, you know, with what you've been able to do, like, differently. You're like, the white patch on his throat. Yeah. He's got a double white patch. I'm du- like, I was just noticing I'd that. I'd never noticed that mm-hmm. until Joey pointed it out. I was like, yeah. oh, I guess he does. Yeah. yeah. You don't see you those know. often. They're beautiful. Yeah. Did you um, age him? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, no, I, I shouldn't say that. Like, I use a, you know, my taxidermist yeah. took a look at it, yeah. you know, and it, it's General. guy Andy Willett, right? Yeah. I highly recommend him. Recommended by, you know, who was the legendary tax? Well, I call him legendary out of Stowe, but it was Mike. Mike. Mike yeah, Adams. Mike yeah. Adams, right? And I never shot a deer that Mike Adams got to mount, which I felt was, you know, uh, yeah. but I was young, so. Yeah. 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 And then the deer above them, that same, ch- that was like, you know, another one of these, like, I call them like field and stream moments, right? Like when you're like, it all comes together. That was 218 above them, same area, right? But that was after I killed that big deer. And I was up in the, I was early season and it was like, say, muzzleloader season, first couple of days. And there's big ass buck walking up through the woods. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> 
you know, and that was another another great great deer. That's a ten. <laughs> yeah, and there's I mean like yeah, there's some other 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 there's some more notable hunts up there in terms of like which was the one tracks that, and, yeah which was know, one that you tracked down i think it was the first buck that you kind of had killed maybe it wasn't really in that area i had a great hunt that one down there on the you know it's like a eight pointer it's a decent eight right and it was like later in november and i cut that track and just dogged that i never i wouldn't say dog the deer i just followed the track right um you know i call it dogging a deer once you really start like tangling with them and he's like Mm-hmm. you know you start being like <laughs> you know uh pessimistic yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know that deer i never got that opportunity because he just kind of moved all day or moved during the time period you know moved a long ways and was you know uh, i didn't have maybe as much experience at the time but he was you know checking his spots you know using the wind and then out, heading out for a stroll heading back to bed right yeah. and so you know like um you know i'm a big proponent of looking for feeding right and they make sudden turns i take that seriously yep. you know when they yep. start heading uphill to certain if it looks like they're heading into a bedding area and then you see them eat something like you better get ready yeah <laughs> right yeah. dead I mean, giveaway and so basically that's what that deer you know um that deer ate something up on an oak flat where there were tracks going everywhere and i was like okay what do we do and i just froze hung out right and then you know i looked over i was like that's a odd looking rock and then it was breathing right like i was that close to that deer and that that deer was you could see its body going up and down it was like no that's an that's an animal you know and then i pulled my gun up and you could see its antlers sticking out on either side of a stump and then that then i shot that thing right out, you know just right there that was great that was as cool as it gets you know i was close close quarters that's pretty neat yeah yeah, it was, uh, you know, under 15 yards. Really? <laughs> yeah, close. Very close. That's cool. It was rain, but it was the, like, perfect conditions, right? Raining, just. What just is that bow one up there? That one, September one. Where was that? I, I, oh, that was with you. You came and helped me get that one out. I did, that was right? the killing tree. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Have you been back to that tree? Oh, they really butchered that place, but it's uh-huh. unpenetrable now, right? Mm-hmm. And that's where I had some real close encounters with some really good bucks in there and shot that buck. You, yep, that same year you had a – was it that year? You were at, you saw a great big one. A couple big ones in there, yeah. And I, Which I, ultimately led to a good – A good friend. A friend good friend, yeah. Killed that thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, giant, giant, one of my best hunting buddies. Uh, I would say hunting buddies. Like, I hunt alone, right? Like, But he's a guy that I share information with for safety. And But you, you know. didn't know him. No, no. And, and I heard a guy shot a 170-pound uh, big – nine pointer i was like there's no way that thing was 170 pounds but new hampshire you never know and i you know drove up to the guy's house and um yeah we're friends ever since yeah you know (laughs) pretty neat i hunted you were somewhere or whatever maybe you'd already killed one or something and you had sent me in there yeah and the sign that that buck was leaving was just yeah it was huge robs there's two of them yeah right and then um it was a what? It was a, it was a big set of antlers. Yeah, it's a big deer, right? It was, it was, I don't know. I, he he's he's a um, quiet soul, you know. But um, you know, I don't know what they. It was one fifty plus. I do remember. Yeah, it was that good. Much. It was a big yeah. big set of. Antlers. Now it was only nine points, right? So, but it yep. was it was it was it's a big set of horns. Yep. Um. So the one that I don't see on this wall, um, you want to talk about how big that one was? You tell me. Had you, okay, I'll ask this question. Have you ever seen a bigger deer during hunting season in the woods with a rifle in New England? No. <laughs> no, I have not. I haven't either. I would say that deer was every bit of 250, if not more. And he had antlers yeah. to go with it. Yeah. So I'll tell the story. I mean, it's it's. I mean, we all – I don't really like – I name my deer, right, like the mountain that they got killed on. Mm-hmm. So I don't name them. Bef- they, once they're dead, like, you know, I'll tell my kids, oh, that's that. My kids. Let's maybe. not tell the name of <laughs> this buck. <No. laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's not. Okay. And so, um, <clears throat> so, th- but we call it the ghost, right? So it's not because it's, you know, yep. it, 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 it like, uh, you know, has occupied a couple of my hunting years. Um, and so it was uh, the first day of muzzleloader season. Again, I'm, I'm, 
I'm hitting it hard early season every year. And um, I had decided to go hunt a brand new area that I had scouted, not scouted, uh, horn hunted, um, hiked, right? But never carried a gun in it during deer season. Near there, right? But I parked at, you know, an area that you would never see a truck park for deer hunting usually. And I hiked in, um, you know, into an area that I was like, this is going to be it. And it was like, it, and it was one of the only places in the state that year that had snow, right? And no one was hunting it. It was like, it had snowed like Thursday, right? So everybody's freak, you know, I was freaking out. Like, is the snow going to stay, this or that? Sure <coughs> enough, snow stayed. And, and I got in there on Saturday morning and it was like, it's sun came up and it was, it was, a, it was just an epic day, beautiful day, but not a deer to be seen, right? Like ghost town. And I did a pretty big loop, and um, I was, uh, you know, just surprised I didn't see anything. But it was pretty big woods, right, for for New Hampshire. And it's a more not known for that area where you wouldn't be like, oh, there's going to be a lot of deer in there. You're going to be like, you're probably not going to see anything. Right. And uh, I got onto a, um, uh, a, you know, what you would call straight lining, right? I kind of started straight lining in a direction, and I cut a small track. And I was like, you know what, this first track I cut, I'm a believer in, like, you know, following that track, right, um, to some life, right? So I got on that track, and it, and it brought me past a, an extremely large signpost that it hit, but it was this deer was clearly not that big. And then it went through some tight cover, and I was like, yeah, I'm not going through that tight cover after that deer. So I looped on it, found the track again, and at, at, at a certain point, once it started heading up onto this, this ridge that I had never been on before, I was like, yeah, I'm going to just – bail on this track and just kind of head towards the height of land and I got up to the height of land and um I saw a, a big ass set of tracks coming in uh, you could see them either, like you could just see that it, it was that soft and fresh and the sun was out and then you could see the fresh ground scrape it was like oh here we go you know now we're talking big ground scrape right leaves thrown and it was and then then you look past that and you saw other activity and it was like you know my I'll be like you know it's a there's deer in here. And it's like, okay, I, I really felt confident within, you know, a hundred yards from that ground scrape that I was going to shoot a deer. Right. It was like, Oh man. Like, it was, it was that fresh. It was that. And it was that everywhere. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. everywhere. Right. Yeah. And I, it was Halloween. Right. And, um, I had to, I have two young kids and if I wasn't home for trick or treating, right. It mm. would, and I was already like in that mode. Right. I mean, I didn't get into this <laughs> stuff until noon. And so that was in the back of my mind. So I started l like looping this area, right? And as soon, and it, you know, you go, you know, you loop it out, and all of a sudden the activity stopped. And I was just like, I'm just going to loop this activity area, right? As soon as I get out of a track, I'm going to go right back in because I had just covered miles, knowing that it's not that way, right? Nothing's that way, like. And I'm just going to like, like. So I did that, and it was really, you know, it just got me into more deer. I heard, I, I think I jumped the doe that, that, uh, in that area. Um, it just kept on getting me back, and it was just huge sign and just multiple sign. I was just like, it was like, when am I going to see this deer? Like, I'm going to shoot a deer. And um, I think it was like 2 o'clock, and I was like, I'm not shooting a deer today, <laughs> you know. And uh, I was a few miles from my truck. Uh, it was, it was, um, you know, not easy walking or hiking where I was going to be heading, you know, really pretty rugged. I picked, horn hunted it a lot where I, where I had to hike through to get back to the truck. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to, um, get on this track. It's heading in the truck and I'm just going to get on this and you know, maybe get lucky. Right. But I knew I was walking away from what I'd call like the epicenter of the buck sign. And I got on that track and I'm following it through some like pecker woods, you know, pecker, like just like, like crap. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> I get into this next, like, where they, had, it looks like they had cut it, you know, in the, re in, in, in 10 years, it's been cut. And, um, I look down to my right and I'm like, that's a ground scrape. And I'm like, that is a nose over that ground scrape. <laughs> I'm like, really? There's a deer bedded? And I'm like, it's a big head. And I got my, uh. I got my gun up, or I, I got my gun up, and I look at it. I'm like, that is a, that's a white-tailed deer. That's the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life, right? And um, antlers are up in the tree. I was like, jeez. And it doesn't see me. It's just chewing its cud, bedded right over its ground scrape. It's like, it's at like 30 yards. It was <laughs> that close? <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. 
Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Everything about it, like, it, the story gets worse, right? It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> right? And uh, I, I, I think I, I, to anyone listening, right, I'm, I'm sorry for all these deer stories. And two is, like, shoot the deer where you're going to, like, kill it. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go on the record of exactly where that is on a bedded deer that's this big. And it's really hard to pick up the angle that that, bed, that, that buck's really bedded, yeah. you know. But hindsight, I should have shot that thing in the middle of the body, right? Like, like you yeah. know. Center mass. I would have been better off, like. Muzzle you know, loader, though, one shot. Totally, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I don't really, that doesn't go through my head when I muzzle loader hunt, right? Like, it's not like, it's like you take the shot you're going to take, right? And yeah. so I shoot a forty five caliber, uh, not a woodman in the arm yet. I do have one now, <laughs> right? Um, but anyhow, long st- I, I base I, I I got my crosshairs on the deer, went down its its head, and and when I got to the center of its neck, I pulled the trigger, you know, and I was convinced I killed the deer, and um, it rolled over and was shaking, and I was reloading, and I was clearly I just shot, I just did it, right? This thing's huge, and um, as I I mean, quick, it's happened quick, right? I'm no I'm no you know. I load as fast as probably anybody else and get, you know, he's, that deer starts heading out. But I was, at that point, it's dead. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and uh, I got on it, blood trail. You know, I was looking for it to be piled up. Right. And um, I'm looking for the pile up. And uh, he took me into like Christmas, tre- you know, like dense Christmas trees. And uh, I'm looking down and then I look and I see legs. I was like, oh, shit, he's standing right there. And that's when he turned his head and he blew at me and ran. And that's when I knew it was like, oh, that's a giant, 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 right? I knew it was big before, but then I saw it like, wow. So first thing I did was text my wife, not going to be home. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't think she got it because it didn't have cell service until you get to a certain, you know, like. um, And I just got on that track and just dogged that that deer that day. I I had shot, I shot at him again. I hit him, uh, I took a piece of skin off his butt as he's running up a a hill. Um, That was two shots. So I'm at two shots on him. I think I shot him once more when I just saw him running. It's three shots. And then I left him, right? I called you. Said we got our we got our work cut out. You called me and you described him as like baseball bats coming out of his head <laughs> with stickers. Yeah, it was a good buck. Um and so we got on that deer, right? The next morning. Yeah, so I came down. Yep. You had snow and uh came down. We we, we got on to him. We and first thing, when we took him to where you had, I don't know whether you had left him, you jumped him one more time, maybe? Yeah, I left you him. You left him right when you jumped him again, Yeah, I think I, think I was, like, I coming into an open, like, hardwood area, right? Like, uh, like a big, like a big, and you just, I mean, I think I heard something, and it, it appeared that that deer had, like, you know, gone through the, through the, through the drainage or yeah. funnel, right? And then headed up onto a hardwood where you could see a softwood break, and he was up there watching me probably at that point. I yeah. pushed him out pushed them off there yeah and that's when i said now we're out i'm out of here yeah so we we uh just the air compressor <laughs> so we get onto his track get up to where he bedded where he jumped and i was like holy shit like instant right instantly i was like yeah we're talking you know <laughs> And I've I'm, I, 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 I've I've hit some other deers that I say are big, and it's like, yeah, we end up killing them. They're not that. Big. Yeah. <laughs> this one was different. Yeah, this this thing I was like, yeah, this thing's like beef cow. Yeah, two two thirty, <laughs> two fifty all day, right? And we get on to him, and we we well, yeah. And remember, the interesting thing here is remember that there, the dogs were on him, right? So we got onto that track, and the first thing that was on it was dogs, and then yep. a bear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right on it, and we were like, this thing's dead. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. yeah. Until those dogs and bears got to look at that thing, and I think they were like, "Yep, that thing's just fine." <laughs> yeah. You know, and they peeled off. They they peeled off. We kept going down, and we were pretty much, what? Well, I mean, we were asshole to elbow. You were leading, and I was behind, and you. We were kind of losing snow at that point. Sun mm-hmm. had come up. We were kind of losing snow. You were looking at, you know, <sighs> track so, in the open. We were going down that moose trail in the skid road, and you were you were obviously looking where the track was and i was like right in front of you and he just i mean he was like standing right in the middle of the road right and when matt went to go to whirl he took off right well yeah i mean we saw him we saw he he nibbled a branch right 
and that was when um, the first time we saw him is when we kicked him down to the river. Well, and that's when I shot at. Yes, him. you were in front. Yes, you were going around that road, and he took. Yep. And and I had shot, and then you shot. Yep. Probably blew your eardrum out. <laughs> and then he went down into that river. Yep. And he went down into this river that's probably. What did you say, 15, 20 feet across? And he was with a do- he had picked up a doe. And he- at that point, we're we're like, I mean, that's where like looking back on it, like we were we were at a we weren't we were past recovery at that point. Like we were hunting the deer, right? But we didn't think we were hunting a deer that was still rutting like he probably really was, right? We were hunting a deer that we thought would maybe we'd find in a bed, right? But that deer went back to where there was a doe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and when that deer took, I was like, holy shit. Like, that, so, was, that was a good one. So that deer went down to this river, right? And I took the track right across the river, went 100 yards. And I was like, I just remember, like, at that point, we'd kind of, like, given up on, on stealth a little bit, right? And I was like, Joey, this is, there's only one track coming out of this river. Yeah. I'm like, are there two tracks going into that river? Yeah, there was only the doe coming out. He's so like, we c- circled it, right? Like, okay, he went upriver or downriver right? right i think matt you went downriver first and then i went upriver and nothing like we were came, there for a while yep came back to the river s- nothing <laughs> did a bigger circle right yeah and nothing and it was like okay well <laughs> and i think you you were on your downward loop still of like that second turn like at this point we're a couple hundred yards downstream from where the doe had crossed the stream yes. and we he had entered and he's on the downward side of it, and I'm just walking the river down, right? Like, this deer is here somewhere, right? <laughs> and and uh, I remember looking up on that bank. I hear a snap, and I look up on that bank, and here he is, and he's going broadside across that bank. And he, and he does. He looks like a Jersey beef cow. He's trying to run, you know what I mean? He's just, like, long body, just loping up this bank, and... I pull up, and when I pull up, I noticed Matt just to the right of the deer. I oh, ran pretty close to me. I, I thought I, I thought that was a. Uh, I mean, we've all shot running deer, right? And we've all missed running deer, and that's as good a shot as I've ever taken at a running deer. Right? And I'm like, as I as I'm like trying to lead that buck, I see Matt in the corner of my eye, kind of like do the same. Like I see his movement. I let him and shot, boom, and it wasn't no more than just a second or two, and then you shot, yeah, and neither one of us touched him, you know, and we got so to back up what that deer had done was got up onto this side bank of this river, river where, where river, the snow was gone, yeah, river makes or never got elbow, any snow, and the side bank was all bare. And he must have just stood right there in those softwoods on that bank and just watched us screw around in the river. And just blended in. And just blended in until we pretty much stepped on him. And then once Stepped we on st- him, yeah. Once we stepped on him, he, he took. How many and times had you guys walked around him? Twice? We, we didn't never walk fully around him. around him. Yeah. But literally, I was in his boot, step, boot tracks where he had walked down the river. Like, I had just seen his tracks in the sand. Yep. And it wasn't but yards and i heard that snap and he's right straight in front of us yeah. he, so, he had just stayed of course you couldn't it you was couldn't very see him. St- it was very steep very there, steep too. very soft steep. woods so, yep. yep yep and yep. uh so we got onto him and of course sun was coming sun was pretty high at that point yeah we'd been yeah we uh. then, then it really turned into more like a uh, a workout at that point like we were hunting until that point and uh, the deer was you know putting up with us and, and then after that that deer was like he was out. That was a different different animal after that, right? Yes. He was like, he still was heading into a, di- he, literally, I mean, we left him at a different zip code. Still blood, still very every, little. Every now and again, he dropped something, yeah. but Not we nothing. chased that deer pretty much till dark. We put him down over the other side of the mountain. Oh, yeah, ways down, and yeah. to the point where we lost snow. We couldn't. Mm. No limp, no nothing, so. Nothing. No, no. Your Nothing. first shot must have been in a... It brisket. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think he, you know, that's the one thing I can only go to is I, I don't think I probably, like, what I think is I probably, you know, you look up on the wall and it's like, oh, these deer are mounted and they're, you know, 
majestically yeah. mounted, but that thing's like slumbered in a, in a, in a comfortable position. Yeah. And, you know, who knows how much, you know, meat is really in that area where I was shooting and, and true how he was, was, you know, what was his position to me? Right. Yeah. And how much were those shoulders kind of like, uh, you know, I, I think that, that, that bullets in the brisket of that deer. Right. And I mean, and the story, like, I mean, I hunted that deer nonstop, right? Like, I mean, I was convinced the deer was alive and sure enough, I mean, I shot at that deer, uh, three more times that, that year, right? Like I saw that deer three more, uh, for another day, right? I was close to it. I think a couple times, you know, before I shot at it, I think I was like, I think that deer was hanging out in an area that I was spending a lot of time in. I passed up some other deer for two years. Um, nothing notable. Right. And this never be vanished. Yeah, I mean, I think he lived in a pretty large, uh, I think he's traveling some territory, you know, and I'd catch him. Like I said, I, I caught him, you know, I caught him, like, John, it's interesting, you know, you've, you're have you one of the first guys, you're like, you know, you've tracked deer and seen them change while they're on, while you're on their track. Oh, yeah. Go from smart to dumb. Yeah. Right? And so I... I've I, seen them go from dumb to smart, too. Oh, well, that's usually how it goes, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, basically I saw that deer and, uh, missed him. Um, this is a tough shot. It wasn't like, I wouldn't call it, a, I'd call that I was shooting at a deer, right. Rather than missing. And, uh, it's on that track that day. It wasn't a good tracking day. It was like crispy and just get, like just dusting of snow and you'd hear him up ahead and, you know, great encounters with moose and stuff that day. It's crazy how, like how loud the woods can be and then how the, all those animals just mesh together. Right. But when you come through, they don't like that, <laughs> you know. And yeah. so that deer, I heard some blowing in the direction that was. Uh, and that's a day that I wish I, you know, uh, wasn't so cautious about the conditions. Right. Maybe just, you know, just hammer on them, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe maybe just for some reason catch up to them. And, yep. you know, instead of sneaking and looping and really trying to be, you know, have him make a mistake. A, a hunter, right? Maybe mm -hmm. more just be a, you know, pursuer and just keep on that animal and maybe something will work out. But yeah. that just and that was the, you know, and after that I hunted the woods continuously and just that it area led to some awesome hunts, but I never I never connected with that deer. Yeah, well, the size of him alone was enough to just can make you continually go back. Oh, I mean yeah. it was just it's like phenomenal. When he was running across that side bank, it was like holy, holy shit. Like <laughs> that deer was two fifty plus. And I think I told John at that point too that like he he, he it was tough for me to see how big of antlers he had, yeah. right? Because his body was so big, but he had a big set of antlers. He could have been he could have been a hundred and fifty inch deer. He could have been a hundred and eighty inch deer. I don't yeah. know. He was that big. Yeah. Just a god awful frame on him. And uh, I don't think, I mean, if for like, I don't think he was a scoring deer, right? Like in antlers, but he had mass and he was huge. And it was in a chunk of woods that you dream about killing a deer like that, right? It was like, you know, like the stories that I've heard from both of you, right? It's like, yeah. you know, it's like, it's one thing killing a big deer and it's even better when you get to shoot him in like. Just a big old monarch. Yeah. Yeah. Just in, you know, that was a, that was a, that was a, that was a hunt. <laughs> that led to great hunting, right? Like, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, I didn't kill that deer, but, man, you're like, you know, you're chasing it, right? Kids, know, you know, like, gives you a purpose to head out there, and, you know, you never know. Yep. You know? Yep, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. You know? Well, we're closing in on an hour. You got to run. You got you got father duties got to do. You family responsibilities, you know? Uh, yeah. No, this is cool. John, didn't hear anything from you. What do you got to say? I'm just here to hear the stories. Really? Oh, sure. Yep. You know, I will say I had a couple, you know, John is, is, is a subcontractor for us here at, at MK Woodworks and yeah. he, it's been, you know, what's interesting is, and then Connor, right. Connor worked in with us for a long time. Yeah. You know, it's really nice to have, you know, uh, like bathe all the guys have been hard workers and just being able to share deer stories, you yeah. know, um, it's been great. Connor will bring your youth back out in you. Oh, Connor just is like, yeah. I mean, like. <laughs> and just like okay and i will say like this is so the only person i've heard shoot and kill a deer in the woods i've been hunting in since like forever is connor this year was it <laughs> oh yeah huh yeah. that's I'm like, funny i'm like who the fuck is hunting around here yeah, yeah. and i'm like find out it's connor i'm like yeah. oh and i didn't know him at that point right no. i'm like oh the little <laughs> yeah 
That's pretty. I funny. think I sent you a text. I'm like, Connor just shot one over yep, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what? And I heard the shots. Heard three shots. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. You know, I had like, I had like, and it's just that's deer hunting, right? Like I was, I might have been like, I spent most of my day probably like point, let's just call it point two miles, point one miles from where he killed that deer, and I didn't see any. I, my day was brutal, right? Like it was great. I was in the woods all day, but like you know, then right over there, he's just like dogging down a big buck. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> and I was ways from that when he <coughs> shot, but yeah. you you saw you met him the next day. You'd heard that he yeah, shot yeah. one, but then you met him the oh, next yeah. day, right? Of course you knew of him because I had mentioned of him and John oh, yeah. had mentioned of him and then you, you saw guys him at the met. gas station or something. Got saw him at the gas station, yeah. right? Like peacocking with a nice buck. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then um I had a wicked hunt that day. I mean, that was an awesome hunt, right? Like I just I got, you know, into a uh first time I'd ever had like a moose and a bear jumped a deer that I was hunting. Huh. Just activity, right? And yeah. then um, and then I shot a nice buck. And, uh, of course, Connor knew that deer. He knows, like, every deer in the state. <laughs> He's like, yep, I've seen that. I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool, though, that it, it turned out that he, you know, ended up working for you for the winter. And, yeah. You, know, and you meet some great, you know, like, uh, you know, you don't meet a lot of people if you hunt big woods, but, you know, it's fun. It's fun to stay in contact with a couple with a couple of the, the people that you, you meet out there, you know. and you Yeah. Know. Yep. Sure is. Well, well, let's wrap this thing up. Um, Matt, where can people find you if they want want to uh, to find you, um, you know, woodworking, that kind of thing? Oh, um, mkwoodworks.com. MK Woodworks. Yep. Okay. You know, and uh, we're always looking for for good, skilled, uh, career oriented woodworkers. Yep. Yep. For sure. Anybody that looking, reach out to them. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I feel like uh, you know I didn't hear much from Eric either. I feel bad. Just here listening to. It's just just what you do. (laughs) Yep. Soaking it all up. Yep. Learning. Learning. (laughs) His turn to tell his next two hundred and fifty pound buck this fall. Yeah. No. (laughs) <laughs> or maybe it will be just telling telling a story about dragging mine out. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking I was looking forward to this, Joey. And, you know, like yeah, it was it was fun. Thanks. And I, I think what like um you're doing is, is really, really cool. Well, I appreciate that yeah, very it's, much. It's fun to see, you know, like someone build thing right that's what I, i'm you know seeing a build something right and then see a person with northwood's whitetail hat on that i don't know them right but it's just really it's really cool for me to see that right yeah. like be like wow and then and then people like it's just it's really neat to see you know uh the quality of guys you've got and i don't know anything about like how it all works but it's really cool to see yeah. you know good people coming together and uh you know sharing um yeah, it's fun. It's really yeah. neat what you guys are doing. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. And uh, you guys will hear Matt again. He'll be he'll be on the podcast again. It won't be too, too long, and he'll be stacking them up and have plenty of stories to tell. <laughs> All right, until the next time, guys.